Hi guys, it's Alexa. Welcome to my channel. Have you ever come across a person who didn't seem very social and acted different and unusual from other people? Maybe you didn't know what to do or how to approach that person or talk to them. Well, chances are that person had a form of autism. People with autism usually stand out compared to others because their condition makes them struggle socially. It makes it really hard for them to make friends. Others might not know what to do or how to befriend them. Although people with autism may seem unfriendly, they most often do like you and want to get to know you. They want friends just as much or more than you do. I have Asperger's syndrome which is a form of high-functioning autism. And although I seem neurotypical, I lack social skills and there are some social cues that I just don't get. I'm a nice person and people generally like me, but they just don't understand my Asperger's and don't know what to do in coming in contact with me. When they try to talk to me, they believe I don't like them when I really do like them. I just have trouble looking at people and just talking to people in general. Well, in this video, I will be giving you some tips on how to form a successful friendship with an autistic person. I hope you find these tips helpful the next time you meet a person with autism. Let's get into the video. My first tip is to just say hi to them and introduce yourself. Do whatever you would usually do when meeting someone for the first time. Ask them about their interests. Ask them any questions you'd like. And if you like something about them, compliment them. It may take them a little longer to answer because they might not be able to come up with an answer right away. And they may hesitate answering with uh, or mmm. So just please be patient. They might not look towards you when you're talking to them, but that doesn't mean they're not listening to you. People with autism have trouble looking at people eye to eye, but they're most likely listening. Also, don't take it personally if you compliment them, but they don't say thank you. They most likely appreciate your compliment, but don't get the right versus wrong social cue or the rudeness social cue. People with autism oftentimes come across as rude when they aren't trying to be rude at all. So don't take it personally. Their rude behavior is rarely on purpose. So don't let it offend you. My next tip is to treat those with autism like you would treat any other friend. Don't use a baby voice or a pitiful Aw, I feel bad for you, tone of voice when talking to them. That's something my neurotypical peers always did with me. They would often talk to me like they felt sorry for me. They would talk down on me like I was a little kid, despite the fact that I was their age. Truth is, there is absolutely no need to talk to them like that. All it will do is hurt their self-esteem or make them feel like they're less than other people or you're looking down on them. Just talk to them normally. For example, invite them places after school and on weekends. For example, your house, the mall, or somewhere like that. They may seem like they wouldn't want to come if you invited them, but they most often do want to come. In fact, it'll most likely mean the entire world to them if you invite them places because they want to be included. When I was in middle school and high school, my friends never invited me anywhere. This was a big issue. I never got invited to my friends' houses and rarely ever got invited to go somewhere with friends. My friends acted like they loved me and treated me like a BFF in school, but they would never invite me anywhere outside of school. I would see pictures of my friends hanging out somewhere together on social media and it really hurt my feelings because I was never in those pictures. It was like I wasn't even part of their friend group. I gave them my phone number and social media so they could be in touch with me, but they never called. So yeah, do your friend with autism a favor and include them in your after school and weekend plans. Ask them for their phone number and if they have Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. However, they may not make contact with you because they're too afraid to ask you for your contact information. What you should do is give them your phone number and social media even if they don't ask for it. In fact, they may never ask you any questions. They still have questions for you and want to get to know you, 
but they are too afraid to ask you those questions because of how they think you'll react. They're afraid you'll be mean to them if they ask you a question. And people with autism hold grudges over when people are mean to them for a really long time. What you need to do is tell them all about yourself and your life, even if they don't ask you questions. For example, you might ask them what their favorite TV show is, and they might answer your question, but not ask you that same question in return. So in that situation, what you do is tell them what your favorite TV show is without them having to ask. You can also say to them, it's okay, you don't need to be shy. You can ask me any questions you'd like with a warm smile and it'll make them feel more comfortable. Not only might your friend with autism be afraid to ask you any questions, but they might love something about you, but be too afraid to compliment you for the same reason. For example, one time when I was in middle school, my favorite teacher was wearing really cute cork wedges, but I was too afraid to compliment her shoes because I was afraid of how she'd react. So yeah, don't expect a lot of conversation or laughter in general if an autistic person goes somewhere with you. It's not that the autistic person is dumb or has no thoughts, it's just that generally being social is a real challenge. Hopefully you could help bring that out of your friend with autism. Lastly, although you may feel tempted to do it because you find it funny, do not take advantage of your friend with autism or have fun at their expense. This is another thing my neurotypical peers did to me. They would tell me to do random things just to entertain themselves, like do a funny dance or eat something disgusting, just for their own entertainment. But it wasn't funny or entertaining for me. Not only will it embarrass them and make them uncomfortable and upset, but it's considered to be both peer pressure and harassment. Do not have fun at another person's expense. That's all the tips I have for you today. I hope you learned something from this video. And I hope you follow my advice when making a friend with autism. I highly recommend you be a best friend to someone with autism. Being autistic is a lonely world, and being a friend will make their lives much more pleasant and happy. You have no idea how much it'll mean to them. Trust me, I know. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I post new videos every Friday. You may also follow me on Twitter at Alexa underscore Gerard 98 and on Instagram at Alexa underscore Gerard. If you have any questions or requests for upcoming videos, please comment them down below. Thank you for watching. Bye.